Hello and welcome to Wing In It. So a few weeks ago now I did a video looking at my top tips and tricks for picking the best starting hand uh, and it got a lot of good attention so you guys really seem to enjoy that uh, which is always good to see and yeah it seems like you found it helpful as well which is nice so I uh, got some good feedback got some uh, good comments suggesting I uh, do more of this so first of all that's what we're here to do today uh, but also some suggestions to maybe talk a little bit about um, the other birds in the starting hand that I'm not keeping and maybe talk about um, why that is uh, maybe look at um, some more of those kind of common mistakes um, that I see newer or less experienced players make uh, in some of the birds that are picking and maybe do a little bit more um, expansion on why those are maybe not the best decisions to go with uh, in a starting hand. So yeah, that's what we're here to do today. Uh, I'm going to go through a few more quick tips, um, some of those common mistakes that I do see, um, and then we're going to jump into an example starting hand. So I've got two games set up with the same starting hands. I'm going to play through one of them, uh, making my own decisions, thinking how I would uh, try to tuck up that starting hand and approach it in the best way. Uh, but then also go through it again and maybe try and get in the mindset of a newer or less experienced player um, and see how it pans out. Play through that first round, uh, maybe compare the boards at the end and yeah, just see how important is that early game decision making in terms of getting your board set up throughout that first round. So before we get into those starting hand examples, I'm going to go through uh, some of those tips and some of those common mistakes that I do see being made uh, by less experienced players in the starting hands. And the first of those is going for bonus card birds. Uh, so yeah, this is something that I generally don't do, but it is something that I see new players go for. And I think I can completely understand it. Bonus cards are good. Uh, you want to be taking that gamble. It's quite tempting, especially in that early game. So yeah, get yourself another bonus card because uh, you know some of those bonus cards, they can score you you know, upwards of 10 or more points if you can play them right. Uh, that is a huge proportion of your score at the end of the game. Uh, but for me, you know, when I talked about those tips in the initial video, it's all about looking for those cheap birds with good brown powers that can help with resource generation in the early game. And unfortunately, bonus card birds are not going to help you out there. They're white power birds, so you only get that single benefit of the bonus card when you play them and then they're not going to help you out uh, throughout the rest of the game so again wingspan it's an engine building game you only have limited turns you want to be able to get your engine set up as quickly as possible um, bonus card birds unfortunately they're not really going to help you out for that in the early game my next tip is to not worry too much about that first end of round goal so again kind of like with the bonus cards i can completely understand why newer players do this. You look at these end around goals and you think, these are opportunities for points. I want to be taking every opportunity I can get to go for some points. But that first end around goal, you know, it's only worth four points even if you do win it. Um, and quite a lot of the time, especially if you're playing three, four, or even those five player games, there's a lot of competition for places. And the first end around goal, you only get one point for coming second and you don't get anything for coming third or below. So yeah, for me, that first end of round goal, if there's any end of round goal I'm going to ignore or intentionally avoid, it's going to be that first one because it's just not really worth that many points. So yeah, it is something I see quite a lot. I see uh, newer or less experienced players keep a specific bird in the starting hand just because it qualifies for the first end of round goal. Maybe you need a bird in a certain habitat or you need a bird with a certain nest type that you can lay an egg on. And they will keep that bird even though it doesn't really fit their strategy or it isn't going to help with that early game resource generation and setting up their engine. So yeah, it's one of those things I do see newer players doing. Uh, and Really, I think uh, it's sometimes best to avoid that and focus instead uh, on some other strong birds that are in your hand, even if they don't hit that first end around goal. And my last tip here before we get into those starting hand examples, and it's more of a plea than it is a tip, but please please stop playing migratory birds in the early game. Now there are eight of them in total, um, not all of them created equally. Some of them are okay options, uh, but for me it's okay at best. Uh, I would only really go for these birds in a desperate situation where I can't find any other good brown powers uh, to get some development going in the key habitats being the forest and the wetlands in that early game. Now again, as with the other tips I've just gone through, I can completely understand why 
newer or less experienced players go towards these birds. They look very appealing. Uh, you know, you get that extra benefit uh, in each habitat because as long as you're planning ahead that extra turn so that you know uh, to move the migratory bird into the correct habitat, you get an extra benefit. Uh, but that benefit does sometimes come at a cost of discarding a different kind of resource to get what you need. So, yeah, for me, I would much rather have a good brown power in uh, those key habitats of the forest and the wetlands in order to get extra resources that way rather than invest so heavily in a migratory bird in the early game so um, yeah in a desperate situation in a pinch they can work uh, but really they're not the kind of bird that you should look to be playing with any kind of regularity so having covered those three tips we can now jump into uh, some starting hand examples so as i said at the start i've got two games here and they've got the same starting hand setup uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into one of these. We're going to play through that first round uh, with myself making the decision making as I would uh, if it were a real game. And then we're going to go into this second game. Uh, but play it as if maybe I'm less experienced or maybe I'm a newer player at the game and I haven't seen these tips and tricks videos. Uh, and I'm maybe going to see yeah, how that plays out in that first round uh, and then come back and we can compare. Uh, the ball positions at the end of that first round and see uh, how we are looking so yeah we are going to jump into this starting hand and i think this is a pretty typical starting hand uh, it's kind of okay but not great uh, for me there are a couple of good options here i would definitely look at this mountain chickadee uh, as the bird to keep for the forest um, you know all these points that we're talking about cheap birds to get down in a key habitat like the forest to uh, to help get a few points but also um, maybe build out that forest uh, and get myself a bit more food going. Uh, we are, of course, going to look at the tray because that is another important thing to bear in mind here, even though we are going second. So maybe makes the decision making a little bit harder there. But um, yeah, we've got a, a couple of good options. Certainly that ring build gull for the wetlands, uh, flexible food cost, and uh, yeah, helps with the card cycle and some point generation as well with that tucking power. But equally, Barred Owl is a perfectly serviceable forest bird. Again, if I'm going with this chickadee, if I can get two forest birds down early on and start getting um, that extra food generation, that could definitely be important. I will look at the bonus card as well because that can sometimes be a factor here. Uh, but it has to be said, these are both pretty weak bonus cards. Um, so I don't think it's going to make too big of a difference, especially in this situation. We are only playing the first round, but I will keep bird feeder here as yeah the chickadee at least does hit that um, now we'll go through these other birds the only other one here i would consider keeping is this carrion crow um, now it's the only real wetlands option uh, in the starting hand and the teal power does have some potential for getting points throughout the game particularly that barred owl if we are going to pick up that it's a predator power we can get some extra points um, through this carrion crow so yeah, I think if I'm in this situation, I would be keeping these two birds. And yeah, going second, I don't know necessarily what is going to be left in the tray, but I think either the ringbill gull to get something going in the wetlands or that barred owl, as I said, to get something uh, going in the forest, but also to help out this carrion crow. Um, both, both pretty uh, interesting options. So um, that is what I would look to keep. Now I'm going to go through and talk about these other birds as well. So Cass's finch. This would be a prime example of what I would think of a bird that maybe a less experienced player will look to keep because hits some of these points that I've just gone through. Uh, it's a bonus card, so can look very appealing uh, in this first round, but again, bonus cards, not something you really should be going for early in the game. And it hits that first end around goal. Um, eggs in the bowl nest now. Again, you'll notice the chickadee, the carrion crow, and even the girl and the owl that I'm looking at in the tray. None of them hit that first end around goal. But I don't mind really in this scenario. I'm quite happy to miss that out uh, if it means getting the forest set up. Now, what else have we got? We've got another brown power here in the Yushin J. Now, I talk about going for brown powers uh, in the early game. So you might be surprised uh, that this is not one I'm considering. But it's very expensive. It's three food. It's only four points. So only a couple more than the chickadee. And the power is just not very good. So again, this will come down to a little bit of experience. If you've played with this Eurasian J, you'll kind of understand... Uh, the unreliability especially in a 1v1 game like this uh, you know you're relying on another player to have uh, a seed for you to steal 
and even then it's only going on as a cache. So this chickadee always gets a cache, this J only sometimes gets a cache. So um, less reliable, more expensive, not something I'm looking for early game. And then we got this Eurasian hobby, which I do sometimes keep these kind of birds early game. If they're just one food, they can go anywhere uh, if you're really desperate to get something down. Um, but yeah, I think if I didn't have this carrion crow, I might look at the Eurasian hobby as an option. Um, but yeah, I think just there are better options uh, for the wetlands and again, the forest even in the trailer as well. So Eurasian hobby, not something I would look to keep. Uh, but we will go through uh, some of these a bit more when we revisit this starting hand uh, in the second pass through. But I think for now, uh, we're going to lock those in. And as I say, some of this will come down to what the AI is going to do. Sometimes a little bit unpredictable. Uh, you can't always uh, yeah, tell exactly what the AI is going to do. So there we go. They have taken uh, the ringbill gull in the tray, uh, which makes me very glad I kept this crank crit. And I am definitely going to go for this barred owl now. Um, I think the way I'm going to set this up, as I said, uh, we've got the chickadee and the owl. I think it's going to be good um, to get that going in the forest because uh, we're potentially getting a couple of points. But also, uh, once these are down, we are going to be getting uh, two food every turn when we're activating that forest. And that is very, very nice early on in the game um, just to be able to get that forest development going. Um, so there we go, opponents, they have picked up and played that ring build goal. So that's going to be nice for them, but... Yeah, for us, it's all going to be about uh, getting this getting this forest going. And again, as I said, uh, when I talked about the Bard Owl and the Carrion Crew, there is quite a nice synergy here. Uh, getting some extra caches at the round end uh, for each Predator. And we do have one now in this Bard Owl. So you'll see here we've got these two birds down in the forest. That means now when we take food, we get two food. But also we potentially are going to get a point through this hunting power. And we're definitely going to get a point through this caching power so um, let's go and take some food it's not going to matter too much precisely what food we take here but um, barred owl is going to get a point there and of course the chickadee as well so we're quite happy with that um, and i think now is the time when uh, the carrion crow is going to go down now I have the choice here grasslands or wetlands but if you go back to that tips and tricks video what's the habitat we want to focus on more in the early game it is definitely the wetlands so and we get the Karen Crow down. And even though it doesn't have uh, brown power that's going to help me when I'm activating that wetlands, um, by just having a bird here, I can now get the option to discard eggs and get extra cards with an egg on that chickadee. Um, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go and draw a couple of cards here. Okay, not great cards, but if I didn't have that Karen Crow, I'd only have been drawing one. Um, so definitely a weaker position there. So. Um, last turn of the round here. Now, um, this is something important to bear in mind is that uh, going second here means I'm going first in the next round. So I should be thinking about what I'm going to be doing on that first turn of the second round. Now, new round meets a new tray, which means I probably want to be ready to draw cards. And if I'm going to want to draw cards, I'll want some eggs down so that I can discard because potentially there might be two nice birds in the tray and I want to pick them both up. So um, in preparation for that here, I'm going to lay eggs and get a couple of eggs down now. Not helpful for the end of round, but as I say, not too worried about the end of round. Uh, but what I am worried about is getting this extra cash. So some nice little synergy there uh, between the birds on my board. So there we go. My opponent, the AI, uh, did win that end of round goal, but I am not too worried. So um, there we go. We played out the first round and we come here into the second round and you'll see we do have some good options. So Nightingale. Uh, in the tray definitely is going to be one that I look at uh, potentially to get some grasses going um, but yeah just in general I think this board it's not amazing but it's perfectly fine I think considering the starting hand we know this crow is going to keep getting caches and we've got a good forest development going on as well so yeah points on the board 13 points certainly not terrible when we've already got some uh, okay resource generation going on so yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back in time. We're going to take a look at this starting and again. And we're going to play through that first round as if I'm a newer or less experienced player. And then we'll come back and compare uh, the two boards at the end. And we'll see uh, the real difference in strength between those two boards based on yeah making the decision making as a more experienced player versus less experienced. All right, so here we are once again. It's all looking very familiar here. Uh, with this starting hand so 
Um, as I said, this time we're going to play it through, um, trying not to use my years of experience of playing Wingspan and maybe try and get into the mindset of uh, a less experienced player here. So, um, as I said, probably the bird I'm going to be looking at is this Cassin's Finch, you know, extra bonus card, get some more points, uh, and working for this first end of round goal with the boldness. So, definitely going to be interested in that, and I can even keep the two food for that as well. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I think probably um, that might be what I'd be looking to go for here. I'm not really interested in this Karen Crow because I don't have any predators, so uh, I can't really be expecting any points off that. And yeah, card draw for me in this early game, not going to worry too much about that. I might be tempted by this Eurasian J as well, actually, because it does hit that first send around goal. So um, yeah, do you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll keep both of these. Uh, and we'll see if we can get the two down and certainly bird feeder i mean there we go we've got two birds that hit the bird feeder so um, what could possibly go wrong keeping these two birds in at the starter can so uh, interesting to see actually here if the ai is going to play uh, exactly the same way this game and they do uh, open in the same manner at the very least um, so there we go that does make sense now uh yeah let's go let's do we want to get our Eurasian J down first or do we want to get our Cassius Finch down? Well, maybe we know a little bit about Wingspan. Maybe we know that brown powers are going to be um, the key to success. So maybe let's get this Eurasian J down. And um, yeah, see if we can. See if we can get some points uh, using that brown power. So, okay, opponent plays the Eurasian Nutcracker. That's a bit of a shame. That does use up their seed. Um, what do we want to do next? Well, this Cassius Finch, it needs, a, it needs a berry. So let's take the berry. Unfortunately, no other players have a seed for me to steal, so um, that is a bit of a shame there. Definitely a bit of a shame, uh, but not to worry. Uh, we'll just keep taking food, so we, we need this seed, so we're going to try and get this seed down. And um, yeah, we can we can definitely win this first end of round goal and see where that's going to take us. So here we go, we get a re-roll on this bird feeder, which is amazing because we do, we do need the seed. And there we go, the seed does come up, so... Unfortunately, Jay still uh, still not able to get the caches. So, uh, if only we could have had something nice there, like a like a chickadee or a nut hatch uh, that gets the cache every time. But uh, unfortunately, here we do have this Jay. So we'll lay some eggs. Of course, in Wingspan, you need to lay eggs if you want to start playing birds. And we do want to be getting this uh, Cassin's Finch down in that second column. Um, and yeah, it's, as I said, it's going to help out for this end of round goal, but we're going to get a nice bonus card as well. So let's take a look at the bonus card. Oh, okay. Well, we've got a cartographer, so we've already got one there. Eurasian J coming in clutch on the bonus card. Um, so let's go ahead and keep that. And uh, yeah, we've got two turns left. So um, what are we going to do with those two turns? Well, we might want to be laying eggs because... Um, we want to be winning this first end around goal. So let's go ahead and do that, actually. Let's go ahead and lay some eggs down here and make sure we're winning this end around goal. And uh, yeah, we'll see. There we go. Our opponent has also laid eggs, but we've got more. And you know what? We're going to take some food because uh, they do have a seed here and we're going to be able to steal that. So there we go. Eurasian J uh, does get one activation. And we win the end of round goal, so we're very happy with that. And here we go here into the second round so um, that is the end of our first round and I think you can see the glaring issue here being uh, no wetland birds so yeah we might want to go and draw cards here but uh, we're only going to be getting one and yeah we're kind of stuck here with uh, not a great tray uh, maybe as I said if we are going to be going uh, for the newer player option we're going to be looking at that blue grosbeak um, but yeah, really, this is the position where you'd want that strong uh, brown power or even just any bird in that wetland so you can start drawing a bit more uh, and trying to, yeah, get a get a few more birds down on your board. So, of course, the forest access with the food uh, situation up here is, is actually okay. It's actually not bad having two birds here. And uh, yeah, in terms of points on the board, uh, this 12 is not including... At the four in a round goal points so we are technically better off in terms of points uh, than we were playing it through the first time but yeah that's largely down to uh, the extra points from the end of round and um, doesn't really reflect the position of the board here uh, with the weaker engine birds and obviously no wetlands either so so just going back to this board that we did play through originally you'll be able to see 
Uh, the real strength here in the forest, much better resource generation. We know we're going to be getting more points there. Um, so even, as I said, if we are slightly behind uh, in terms of points on the board right now, uh, I think the potential of this board is definitely looking stronger. And even to be honest, coming back to this now, uh, being able to grab a rodent and play this common buzzard uh, next to the Carrion Crow in uh, the wetlands just to get a bit more card access going certainly gives good prospects and yeah the card access is really the key here uh, it's the number one thing you should be focusing on in the early game in wingspan is being able to get your wetlands built up and uh, getting some extra cards going and yeah of course with that uh, second game that we played through uh, didn't really have anything going there in the wetlands uh, which is definitely going to hold you back so there we go there are some more tips and a nice little example for you as well so hopefully you found that useful uh, if you do have any questions about starting hands or any comments about this please do let me know down below this video uh, and if you want to see more of this do hit that like button and let me know as well i'm more than happy to keep making these uh, if you do find them helpful and uh, yeah if you've got any of your own tips that you want to share with me or with other viewers please please do put those down in the comments as well but for now thank you very much for watching if you're new here please do subscribe plenty more strategy and gameplay content coming your way and I'll see you in one of those videos very, very soon.